Among the frontliners, the role of nurse is very crucial. They are considered the angels from heaven. With their smiles, love, compassion, and concern, they are touching every patient's physical and emotional agony. Even now, millions of nurses all around the world serve their patients at their level best. Today, every hospital has these angels from heaven. Today, nursing is considered to be one of the most noble and prestigious professions. It is one of the booming industries now. But the condition was not like this before, some 150 years ago. There were a very small number of nurses found in the entire world. They didn't have any proper training or professional skills. There was not a single nursing training center anywhere. It was the first time the medical world realized the important need for dedicated nurses with proper training. It was normalized when an angel from heaven introduced all of these. The angel from heaven was none other than Florence Nightingale, who was popularly known as the lady with the lamp and the founder of modern nursing. She was a woman with compassion, a mathematical genius, a social reformer, and a statistician. Can a woman who was from an upper class family serve the wounded and six persons with love and compassion? But Florence Nightingale did it cheerfully. Her life inspired many women to do so as well. Her great effort have transformed the entire nursing profession and hospitals in Britain, as well as the medical field of the world. She was the youngest child of her parents, Frances Nightingale and William Shore Nightingale. She was born on May 12, 1820 to an affluent British family. Her mother found herself taking pride in socializing with people of prominent social standing. However, Florence was a little shy, avoiding the center of attraction, but with a strong willpower. Many times Florence felt that her mother was controlling her a bit too much. Concerning the daughter-mother relationship, she tried to please her mother many, many times. When her parents raised her, She learned classical education, including studies in German, French, and Italian. From a very young age, by nature, she was a humanitarian and actively served the ill and poor people in the village. At the age of 16, she realized that she was called for the divine purpose of nursing. When she shared her calling to be a nurse with her mother, Frances Nightingale was not happy about her decision and refused to allow her to pursue nursing. When Florence was 17 years old, her mother insisted on her marrying a suitable gentleman, Richard Monckton Mills. Florence refused marriage because he didn't stimulate her intellectually nor romantically. But her moral and active nature required satisfaction, and that would not be found in this life. In spite of her parents' objections, Nightingale enrolled as a nursing student at the Lutheran Hospital of Pastor Fliedner in Castleworth, Germany in 1844. After her nursing studies, she took a job in a hospital for ailing governesses. The employer was so impressed by the compassionate work of Nightingale and soon promoted her to superintendent. She met her first challenge in that position when chlororia broke out. The unsanitary conditions caused the rapid spread of the disease. So it was her first task to improve hygiene practices. This helped to reduce the death rate considerably in the hospital but due to her hard work, she also fell sick. It was a big challenge when she started her nursing career. She came to know many things about her profession during this time. It was the Crimean War that taught so many lessons in her nursing career. 
It was the war between England and Russia for the control of the Ottoman Empire in 1853. In this war, nearly 18,000 British soldiers were seriously injured and admitted to military hospitals. At that time, there was not a single female nurse in Crimean hospitals. The war office avoided hiring them due to their past poor reputations. The soldiers were in unsanitary and inhumane conditions with insufficient medical attention. In late 1854, Nightingale received a letter from Secretary of War, Sidney Herbert. He appealed to Nightingale in 1854 to organize a corps of nurses to treat the sick and fallen soldiers in Crimea. She responded quickly and formed a team of 34 nurses and started sailing to Crimea within a few days. When Nightingale and other nurses arrived at the British Base Hospital in Constantinople, the site was horrible there. The hospital was in a filthy condition with contaminated water, bugs, and rodents. To add to the woes, there was a lack of necessary things for a hospital, like bandages and soap. More soldiers died from infectious diseases like typhoid than the injuries caused in battle. Nightingale quickly set to work. She collected hundreds of scrub brushes and asked the less affected patients to scrub from floor to ceiling of the hospital. Nightingale spent most of the time caring for the soldiers. In the evenings, she moved through the dark hallways carrying a lamp while making her rounds. She ministered to patient after patient with great compassion. Deeply moved by her love and compassion, they started to call her the Lady with the Lamp and the Angel of the Crimea. The hospital's death rate was reduced by two-thirds due to her great efforts. Besides this, in every area she tried to improve the quality of the hospital by arranging special dietary and nutritious food, setting up laundry to provide clean linens, and a classroom and library to stimulate patients' intellectual level and entertainment. She wrote an 830-page letter to the respective authorities, which resulted in establishing a royal commission for the health of the army in 1857. Nightingale returned to her childhood home at Lee Hurst in 1856. She was very surprised by the warm welcome of the people. To add to her surprise, the British Queen rewarded her by presenting her with an engraved brooch that came to be known as the Nightingale Jewel. She also got a grant of 250000 from the British government. In 1860, she established St. Thomas Hospital and the Nightingale Training School for Nurses. It was due to her efforts that healthcare quality was greatly improved in the 19th and 20th centuries. Nightingale helped create a royal commission into the health of the army with the support of Queen Victoria. The statisticians of this commission came with the data which said 16,000 of the 18,000 deaths were from preventable diseases, not battle but it was Nightingale's ability to translate this data into a new visual format that really caused a sensation. It was really a great shock to hear this. Her Nightingale Rose diagram showed a decrease in death due to the sanitary work of the commission. This inspired to lay down new standards for sanitation in the army and other areas. She was the first female member of the Royal Statistical Society. She was also named an honorary member of the American Statistical Association. Meanwhile, unfortunately, Nightingale had contracted Crimean fever and would never fully recover. When she was homebound and bedridden at the age of 38, she would be so for the remainder of her life, but she continued her work from her bed. 
From bed, she spent her time interviewing politicians and welcoming distinguished visitors. Even though she was bedridden, in 1859, she published Notes on Hospitals, which focus on how to run civilian hospitals properly. During the U.S. Civil War, she was constantly consulting about the best field hospital management. Nightingale was conferred the Merit of Honor by King Edward in 1908 at the age of 88. She received a congratulatory message from King George on her 90th birthday. Do you know, she was the first woman to be awarded the Order of Merit. She became a famous public figure who many young women admired, even from the upper class, and they followed her example to enroll themselves in this noble profession. Florence Nightingale fell ill August of 1910 and died unexpectedly on August 13th. Her funeral was a quiet and modest affair, despite the public's desire to honor Nightingale as they desired. To respect her last wishes, her relatives turned down the national funeral. Now, the lady with the lamp rests in peace at Hampshire, England. Today, Florence Nightingale is widely revered as the pioneer of modern nursing. In her memory, the Florence Nightingale Museum has been built in which more than 2,000 artifacts have been kept. Her story reminds us of one thing. We have only one life in this world. Think about it. Do you live for your selfish needs or do you lay down your life for others? A small step of this lady has changed the entire outlook of the hospital industry. May this story inspire you to take a small step to be a blessing in others' lives.